Coming in hot, Chinch, on a Tuesday, brother. How we doing, man? Doing good, man. Has the uh, has it worn off yet, or do you still feel like a newlywed? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> you know what, Sarah's. You know, we've we've been together for four years, and she's we've been in the same house for a couple couple years. But I think I think you do feel a little more of a connection, like the commitment, yeah. making that commitment in front of your family, in front of you know God. So yeah, I think there's definitely a little bit more of a more of a feeling that way, but. It's business as usual, bro. <laughs> business as usual. As usual. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, we didn't talk about it. What you? What is <clears throat> on your ring? It's not your ring. Oh, ring. dude, how about this? My man, uh, my man Bobby T over there, at South Hills Jewelers, made this made this ring for me. It's it's got like you can't really probably see it, but do you see it? Oh, you can kind of see that. Yeah, is so you see the mountains, the mountains and the trees in the back, and yeah. there's buffaloes running around it. Cool. Yeah, it's really cool dude i thought it was really cool what color what is that made out of titanium nice dude yeah it's like a so, golf club on your head yeah really cool dude it's a i got two rings i got that one and then sarah's like could you just get a normal one too i'm like oh come on i want the one with the buffaloes on it it's running for the storm all the time so <laughs> i got i got it she's like she's like sean casey the only guy in the world who's getting two two <laughs> wedding rings <laughs> hey, did you ever when you played some guy got really rich i think he was a former athlete making those like rubber oh the rubber rings yeah you yeah no i did wearing... i did use that a little bit not when i played yeah. um but i did use it like you know at the end of you know f for a few years just yeah. like when i work out and stuff i put it on i probably should do that now what i'm doing now is dude when i first got to the big leagues i, I lost my you know, my, if I had my first marriage, I'd lost my wedding ring. It was so bad. Like I, I, because when you're playing, you're taking it off all the time. Every, so yeah, dude, I got, I got the same ring back <clears throat> and I started putting it in my shoe. Uh, so, oh, when so, it, while you were playing? Yeah. So I was playing. So I'd get dressed, boom, wedding ring goes right into my shoe that I'm going to wear. You know what I mean? Oh, to, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like my, my sneakers that I wore to the yard. Never do never lost again. So as soon as you put your shoe on, you know, it's there. Boom, put it on. I like that. So, you got to think of creative things with these things. Like right now, I'm like, go to work out. I'm taking it off, put it on my, in my sneakers. Right. And tie it and work yeah, out. That's and smart. I go, then I take it off. So. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I've always been terrified of losing mine. I don't want yeah. When people come to our house in the summer uh, and they're going to go in a pool, I make every girl take their wedding rings. Like, I don't know how people go like into swimming pools and into the ocean with their rings on. It terrifies me. Yeah. <laughs> So like I, that's like a, a house rule in a Camino house. Hang like, on, my oh. beautiful bride's walking in. First oh, time ever. She is. Oh. The <laughs> glowing bride. Look at you. <laughs> Wearing white. I like it. It's apropos. You should wear white for the rest of the year. Yeah, it's dry Take clean day. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So how are we doing? Are you have fun? Are you uh? You, are you over? feel you different still... about being married? Yeah. Do you? What, what's You're the... awfully demanding. <laughs> <laughs> give me some water. Get me the, give me something to eat. What are we doing wow. here? Well, you look off. Awesome, no, it Sarah. just feels great. I mean, it feels like deeper commitment on this. Yeah, that's what, I, oh, that's what I said. Really? Yeah. Aw, see, we should be married. Yeah, he <laughs> said that. And then, and then at the end, he goes, but it's still business as usual in a case he has. <laughs> it is. It is. It's like, you know, we had a really, really nice weekend, but, you know, it's. We're back, back to the at routine. it. Back at it, baby. Back, back at to it. getting the kids to school. And yeah. Back to running out. Fun. Oh, well, you looked awesome. Everything looked great. I'm so thank glad you for so you guys. Much. And I'm thank so you happy. for that clip. That was just. She so loves weird. that clip. Sarah loves I that clip. I think I've watched it like 80 times. <laughs> I, I said... laugh every single time. And my favorite part <laughs> is you, your reaction, where you're like covering up your face and like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm witnessing this. <laughs> But you know what I said to Sean after? I'm like, you know, honestly, you'll have that memory. That, like, I remember, like, I don't have, like, a bachelor party, but I remember going out with my my side of the family and just did her. But, like, I kind of remember it. But this <laughs> ruining the surprise, you'll yeah. never forget. And it's on camera. You have the rest I of the know. Lives. 
<laughs> so great. Sarah loves that stuff too. You know what I mean? She's like got the greatest sense of humor. She's just like, that's so great that you blew the surprise. <laughs> no, it's not. It still was a surprise. I know. It still there worked you out great. You didn't know exactly where you were going. You just knew it was T yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> so funny, it was over the top high T. Over the top, yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, Sarah. Well, I love you. I'm so glad you guys are married. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. I just kissed her. It's very <laughs> It's my girl. There's, there's there she girl. goes. All, off she goes. You want to talk me. about? Although one thing about Sarah though, like she's obviously taken over the, the space. She she's always rearranging the kitchen. Oh, really? It's incredible, dude. Like, like, like cups were here for like months, then they're over here. Oh. Then I'm like, today I'm trying to get Jillian a Tylenol. I'm like, oh, I have no idea where the Tylenol is. Wait, Sarah's job back. security. <laughs> can't get rid of me if you don't know where things are. That's a good, yeah, that's the point. Job, that's a good point. That's a great scary. point. I mean, there's no way to get rid of her because things are everywhere in this yeah. house. It's so funny you say that. The other day, just like finally, after like six years, rearranged every cabinet, every oh, cabinet in our kitchen. Yeah. Was still, and that was like, that was probably like a week and a half ago. Literally every day I open a cabinet and I'm like, this isn't, okay. this isn't where I get my cereal bowl anymore. <laughs> And I was looking for Macy's uh, uh, food bowl for like a half hour yesterday morning. And I'm like, I'm not going to tell her because I know because you know what she did. She did walk around and go, this is here. This is here. This is here. This is You here. weren't listening. You weren't after listening. Two, after like the second one, I was like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> and now that she's out, she's working. She's not as remote anymore. Like I walk around the, the kitchen all day like, where's the spoons? I need a spoon. I'm like, what do <laughs> Dude, the other day, the other day, uh, I think I might have said this, but Je um, Jessica Ortner's uh, daughter, Lucia, who's my goddaughter, yeah. she comes running across the mayor's office, takes a header right into the fireplace here. Boom. I'm like, uh oh, so she's she's good and everything like that. She's yeah. not no bleeding. So Jess holding her just like, do you think you could just get me a band aid because that, that'll make her feel better? I'm like, yeah, no problem. So it's like urgent. I run in the kitchen. No idea where they are. No idea where the band-aids are, dude. I'm freaking. I opened every cabinet you could possibly. I opened 48 cabinets, <laughs> 0 for 48. And I finally was like, I finally found in like the 49th try. It was the only place I didn't look. And like the one thing I needed, I finally found a band-aid. She's looking at me like, "You serious?" I'm like, "I'm like your friend." She she re re rearranges the kitchen every three weeks. The band-aids have been in 17 spots. <laughs> There's a great Sebastian Maniscalco joke where he talks about adults shouldn't be should never have more than one band-aid on. He said one box of band-aids should last you a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> one box of band-aids. Yeah. Oh, Sarah's back. What do you got? Oh. One last thing. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> the level of discomfort that the Casey family exhibits when i move things around i now find it comical so i i do it on purpose my own entertainment oh move my things God. around so last night i moved the alexa like oh. whatever that thing is called yeah alexa um over to another side of the kitchen <laughs> and they were like well now we can't see what time it is ah, like, you guys to your phones. what do you mean you don't know what time my, it is? my daughter <laughs> call it my dad, Carly, and I get so my, my I mean my daughter Carly and I get so rattled. She look at me, I look at her, I was like, I don't know, Carly. There's a Alexa's not behind the refrigerator now. So it, was, it was kinda of, it is kinda of, it's becoming a joke now in our house. Yeah, that is so I good. have so many things that I use to entertain myself. <laughs> Here's another example, and I'm sorry oh, to no, I podcast, love it. But so Sean loves to give his like he likes to workshop his keynote speeches and, mm -hmm. you know, some of the things he does for Breakthrough Pro or even his hitter meetings right. in the kitchen. And oh. it's always when I'm in the kitchen trying to do something, <laughs> he's like, hey, <laughs> if you're not paying attention, he like pokes you. He's like, because he wants you to face <laughs> him and listen, you know, like he needs that validation that like you're yes. listening, I know. which I get because yeah. he has like a, a fun intensity that like he just wants to get out. Yeah. So now what I do when he does that is, Rather than just sticking to what I'm doing, I'm like, let's make this a game. So I walk around in circles in the kitchen and see how long it takes for him to realize, realize. what I'm doing. I just follow her like a dog. Like, yeah. hey, 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 yeah. hey, spot, hey, spot. That's, anyway. that's good. Yeah. Oh man, see, that's what I got to deal with. That's so. That's what I got to deal. But that's with. what I was dealing with that before, but we tied the knot. So. Hey, by the way, I saw your dude. I saw your Eddie Vedder's the speech the at Eddie Vedder's event. That was so great, dude. Oh, dude, so, thanks. There's man. a Buffalo thing, right? Running twice. Yeah. 
storm. That was really cool. Yeah, it's the truth, though, man. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. You're getting good Thank at you. those things, man. You were always Thank good you. at that stuff. Thank you, Chase. You, you've always motivated me. Man. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, bro. I'm going down to Richmond this week. I got a little keynote speech on Thursday to uh, the Richmond Squirrels down there, the uh, minor, league, minor league team. Oh, cool. They've got my oh, big, kind of big hot stove fundraiser, so I'm flying down. Kind of a wimpy uh, to huh? squirrels yeah let's go out there squirrels richmond flying squirrels flying squirrels oh, dude you don't want squirrels. a flying those squirrel coming at you oh yeah with those yeah. wings they got those like wings almost like yeah dude what if you walk out of your house on flying squirrels coming at you freaking yeah, that's true that's scary you're not being like oh hey mr squirrel you're freaking running for your life you're you're running in the pool <laughs> holding your breath for the next seven minutes it's a good point um all right uh oh let's actually talk some sports here <laughs> uh rookie of the year's announced yesterday very excited what? oh He's yeah like, a Corbin and a Gunner, probably the first Corbin and first Gunner that ever won Rookie of the Year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very fancy names for both of them, but both very deserving. Who, who do you yeah, want both be? and both unanimous. I think it's the yes. first time since Bellinger and Judge in 2017 that both guys were unanimous decisions. All 30 yeah. votes went to Carroll and Henderson. Man, I, I was fortunate, Chinch. I got to watch these guys both up close and personal. You know, to see Corbin Carroll. First, I, I first saw Gunnar Henderson when we went to, we went to Baltimore and played them. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When you look at all the greatest athletes on the field, he stands out. Yeah. He stands out. He is such a big guy. He's, I think he's 6'3", six, 6'4", six, plays shortstop, plays third. He had a 6'3", six, six, three, six, three, 220, man. I think he had a 6'3", 220. He had a 6'3", war, too. Like, wow. legit. Like, one of the best yeah. wars in, in, the, in, in the history of the game as a rookie. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I'm glad I'm glad he won it too. By the way, because like he wasn't talked about as much as most guys who have done who did would like a, a rookie that would do what he did. I feel like he was like almost a little bit under the radar at times during the season. But you you got to see him up close and personal, right? How many well, times you played him ten times before you were done? Well, dude, if you go back and look at his year, he came out the gate scuffling bad. I think he was hitting like a buck seventy or something. Right through into may yep. with like no damage no nothing i was like hey what's wrong with gunner henderson what's wrong with gunner mm -hmm. henderson and then he got hot you know and i thought what he said he, i saw in a i saw in an article he was saying i just had to stick with the process i've, I've seen this movie before I've, I've had enough of bats in the minors and in this game to know that like i've seen this movie stick yeah. with the process you know a tough thing as a young kid is what you what you do sometimes chinch Mm -hmm. is you know you throw the baby out with the bathwater. you know what i mean like oh you struggle a little bit and you say i gotta revamp my swing this doesn't work i'm in trouble no it's the big leagues there's going to be adjustments you're in the big leagues because you're a really good player yeah. and the swing that you got you there works and the approach that got you there works you just gotta you know relax slow down get you know you're one pitch away from getting hot and i feel like after he got his you know sea legs under him he was he started, uh, he started dominating, man. You know, tw I think he had, you know, 28 home runs. I don't know the exact numbers. I got but it here. 28. 28 bombs. 82 ribbies. 82 ribbies. 29 yeah. doubles. 29 doubles. Bunch of triples. How about three? Yeah, he's got, dude, nine triples. Nine triples. Like, dude, he, this guy was a real deal. So when you go, when you go, when you go back and look at this team and you, you think how good they did, man, he was a big, big factor. This is one of the best players on that team. You know, I think not just a rookie, one of the best players on the team and going to be a superstar in this league. So good for Gunnar Henderson. Um, I don't think they've had a rookie of the year win it since, uh, since Greg Olson in 89 too. So, oh, yeah. That's so that's a, remember Greg Olson. I love that yeah, dude. great baseball card. Nasty <laughs> curveball, dude. Greg Olson, <laughs> no. nasty, nasty hook. He was yeah. nasty. No, no, you said big. Corbin, it's compact, man. He's kind of like built like me. No, I'm not too yeah. much more here. I mean, yeah, you're compact and jacked. Compact and jacked. <laughs> five ten, one sixty five. He's listed. I mean, he probably gets about to one seventy, one seventy five by now. I would guess with all yeah. the weight programs you bastards have in the end. Yeah, really, but dude. <laughs> He he reminds me. I, I was trying to like think of a comp. I don't really know a comp other than when I say when I say compact, he's got kind of like the body type and kind of like the tight stroke that uh, Bregman has. That's kind of like yeah. Oh, I can. Oh, that's a that's a good comp. That's a good comp. That's a good you. comp. Uh, and also too, I mean, obviously they're different players because he's a th one's a third base yeah. and one's an outfielder. If you type the hitters a little bit, but you but no, I, I like short, compact swings. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, 
I, I look at Carroll. You can see why he got all thirty votes too. I mean, this guy's a game changer. What was what, what was what was good for baseball was that both these guys were in the postseason too. Yes, and everybody got to see him. Henderson in the postseason, and then you got a chance to see Corbin Carroll all the way to the World Series, and just see what kind of impact that he had, you know, on uh, on on the game of baseball. I mean, literally, when he's on and he's having a nice game, he could take over the game. He doesn't even have to get a hit. He could get a walk, steal a base, make a play in the outfield. But then when he does get hits, he could take it deep. You know, he could. Uh, you know, when he if he gets a hit, he's you know somebody he could steal second, steal third. 50 stolen bases. I mean, this guy, this guy was a, was a nemesis. If you played against him, this guy was a game changing player. So both so deserving, man, Gunnar Henderson, Corbin Carroll, you can see why both these guys got all 30 votes because they are going to be stars in this league. Uh, I agree. One other thing I'll add the thing that like, I mean, I was already impressed with Corbin Carroll is so great. Such a great player, but like, dude, he's 22 years old. I think Shahadi said this because she, she was with the D-backs like through the whole run uh, with TBS. And she mentioned something like this. His motor is so calm, dude. In like big wins, like, you know, he's doing a post-game interview. You're 22 years old. You're in the World Series. And it's like, yeah. I just got a pitch to hit. I was really psyched. The guys are fired up. I'm like, dude, this guy. It's like a cold-blooded killer. Like, uh, yeah. He has like the that. Navy SEAL guys. Like, the, yeah, the, yes, the guys that are Navy SEALs, yeah. you, they're the guys that the calmest guys that you know oh, they're, they're not the, the guys you would on? think who's the guy we had on who does who did the navy seal program yeah mark divine mark divine. mark divine when he talked so calmly about when he would hear bullets and he would just start walking towards the bullets <laughs> i was like this guy is the most terrifying human being i've ever seen and he hasn't raised his voice like one octave in his conversation i was te- not terrified of him i'm so impressed right. corbin carroll that's, that's a great point he's got like a navy <laughs> seal head where it's like Never high, never low. No. Smiles in a good mood. Looks like he's happy to be playing baseball, but like just cold blooded. Like, yeah, they had, he had a couple games where he, if you go back to his interviews during the postseason, a couple games where he struggled and then he started getting hot, real hot. Mm-hmm. And they asked him, Hey, how'd you get through the struggles? And he goes, Process. What do you mean? I just, I knew it was coming. I just keep my process. I just keep coming out there every day, doing what I got to do, control the controllables. And next thing you know, I'm 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 back where I want to be, but that's baseball. There's ups, there's downs. I'm not going to get too high on the high, too lows on the lows. You're never as good as you think you are, never as bad as you think you are. That's Corbin Carroll. Yeah. But you're right, man. I, I think that's that mentality of like, that's how you go through 162. That's how you put up the numbers that he put up. That's how you, you know, uh, you you get the production he did, and how you stay on the field. It's just. You just got to ride it out, man. You got to continue to show up, continue to have a great routine, continue to have a great process during the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're going to put up numbers in this league. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk like, so now tonight is the uh, manager of the year. I just, I, I totally forgot about this. I just realized Craig Council is nominated. Imagine he wins. Oops. Now you got to do that interview. You're stuck. You got Amsinger right in your grill tonight. <laughs> if you win Craig Council, you're probably hoping he's not winning. I mean, I know. Who do you think is going to win that? In your face. I don't know, dude. I mean, I think Skip Schumacher, dude, has a great shot of winning that. I would love that. I mean, I'd the Marlins, that. you know, who thought they were going to do what they did this year? Yeah. Now, okay, let me ask you this. Like, without even handicapping a race so much, like, what, it be, especially being back, you were back in the clubhouse, what is it, a decade later after you left mm-hmm. the clubhouse? Yeah. What? what what are the challenges managers managers have now that maybe were different? I'm not saying they're it's harder to be a manager, like, but what are the different types of challenges now than back when you were playing? Is I think there's more noise. Human human element to it, or is it not? I well, I just think there's more noise nowadays, you know, with social media, everyone's got a voice, you know, all that stuff. Um you also are answering to so many more people. You got the front front office is way more involved in the manager's you know decisions. Um, although when when I go looking back at my time with Booney and those guys, Booney, you know, people think Booney doesn't make out the lineup. He makes out the lineup every day. Mm-hmm. You know, he's the guy. Now there's a ton of input on, hey, this this might be a better matchup for him. So there's a lot of things to consider there. There's so many things to look at. Um, also, also too, I think where the analytics does a great job too is that. You know, you're having meetings to determine, hey, listen, if this guy gets in, the starter gets in trouble, what's, what, you know, and this guy comes up in the lineup for the other team, 
who are we bringing in? What is what does the bullpen look like? You know, what what's the what's our best matchup here? That, that I think that's a bigger deal yeah. now in this day and era, that the day and age than ever. And that analytics is great for that, for yeah. the matchups, for maybe this lefty's better, you know, is really good against this righty because he doesn't hit cutters well or whatever. You right, know what I mean? Right. So I think that, so the manager's meeting with those guys every day. He's meeting, you know, he, he, he knows what's going on at the hitters meetings. He's got to meet with, uh, you know, he, he's got to make sure it put out, you're putting out fires all the time with the players. This guy hasn't played in four days and this guy thinks he should be playing and this rookie's up and he needs to play. And so you're juggling that you're making sure um, you've got to feel, feel the temperature in the room all the time. How you doing? How's everything going? Well, how's it going at home? You're struggling here. You know, you're, you're like a psychologist too, to these guys. So like, um, there's so much going on for a manager yeah. that, you know, I, like I said, when Craig Council got $8 million a year, I'm like, good. When mm. you get, when you, when you pull the veil back and you get to see what's going on, how the sausage is made in that clubhouse, that manager has so much going on. And then when you get into the game, dude, now it's time to motivate. It's time to uh, pull the right levers. It's time to make the right decisions. You also have to know over 162, maybe a guy's not having a tough time at home, or maybe a guy's just going through a little anxiety, or, you know, he's not available tonight. And, you know, these certain things. So you got you know the heartbeat better than someone, uh, uh, you know, the media yeah. or a fan going, hey, how come so-and-so didn't come in? Well, you know because you're behind the, the curtain. So – these guys that are manager of the years, I th- that are up for manager of the year, top three guys out of thirty, you know, thirty guys, uh, out of you know, thirty managers, there's six guys that you're yeah. that you're looking at. That's a big deal for me. You know, when you talk about Snitker, I think the guys are Snitker, Schumacher, and Council, mm-hmm. and then who is it? Cash, Boach. Bochi. is Boach up? Cash, yeah, yeah. Boach. Cash, and uh, wait, who's the third here? I just saw Cash Boach. I'm missing somebody really good here. As Paul, yeah. hold on. Yeah. Why Cash, Butch. Dusty? No. Wait. American League. Why am I missing this? Bochy. That's one. Oh, a Hyde. Brandon Hyde. Oh, Brandon Hyde. Yeah. yeah you know Brandon what I like about Hyde. that, by so, the way? Ca- huh? What I love about it is, like, think about the personalities are all a little bit, like, Snicker, Cash, like, Bochy. Like, it, it's really cool. I, I like how young, like, younger guys have been getting their shots and the older guys when you need that guy who's been there when you need a bruce bochi they're signing them so it's it is a really good mix of managers now like in the nfl dude i'm with the nfl all year long every it's all the same names yeah it's all the same names in the nfl in baseball i think like guys have kind of pushed their way in like there's there's a youth type movement in coaching hell you are coach you're young yeah. dude right uh, and then there's also like, hey, sometimes you need. It's exactly what happened with Dusty. They they got Dusty uh, with the Astros because he was the only person with the experience right. to handle the mess that they were coming yeah. off of, yeah. you know. But then these young guys, you know, dude, Kevin Cash with the Rays. It's like, dude, Kevin a, Cash is going to be the number one free agent soon. I mean, he was he's won he's won manager year two out of three years. This might be his best season ever mm-hmm. with with Wander Franco gone. With all the you know all the all the injuries they had in that rotation, they still won ninety nine games or whatever. I mean, this this might be Cash's best body of work is this year. So when you see a guy like Council making eight million dollars a year, I know Cash not making close to that. That's your number one prospect right there, managerial prospect. So, yeah, yeah it, it you know it, 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 I'm excited for these guys. This is a great award, um, and you're right that there's a there's a lot of responsibility that falls on these managers, man. Yeah, it's a great point, and I'm just happening on a quote from the uh reds president of baseball operations uh what do you say neander uh his quote about cash is exactly what you just said the job he did and that our staff did this year to guide this team to 99 wins this is in my opinion the best work that they have done and cash is at the front of that yeah it's exactly what you're saying That's yeah cool, i mean man. you know you wonder how these guys the guy do too, right great guy oh cash is the best dude he reminds me of terry francona he's like a terry francona jim leland Good one. you know but he's more like a Tito. I mean, Tito was his mentor too. Really, he played with him and played with him in uh, in Boston, and then he coached under him in Cleveland. So you get to watch Tito every day. Cash has that personality. He's a ball buster to the umpteenth degree. He's busting <laughs> everybody's chops, and they're making everybody feel like you know they're they're the the best 
player on that team. They, you gotta have. Hey, we gotta have you off the bench because you're the best. You know, there's no one in the business that's better than you, hey, dude. You could just see it when we played these guys. You're like, wow. You could see that they believe that. You know, he just sets a great tone there. So, uh, I'm excited for to see what what happens when Cash gets a chance to be a free agent as a manager. Yeah, that's a great point. Oh, oh, hey, one last thing, dude. Props to your guy. Let's go. You're, oh, look at that. We both got. It. Let's go, bro. Arte time. Our boy Brian Johnson. Arte lands today, November fourteenth is launch day today. So go get your go get the book Arte. You can get it on uh, the audio book, or you can get it you know get it wherever you get your books, Barnes and Noble or Amazon or whatever. This book is I'm already I do two pages every day because they're, they're four hundred fifty one micro chapters. It's such a cool way to do it. I'm on page two almost page one seventy three, but this book is a life changing book. Just great. Great medicine, wisdom, everything in here for your mind and and uh, and your soul, man. So go get this book. Arte, our man Brian Johnson. He was just on a couple weeks ago. Check him out too in that in that uh that episode. So good. And uh have you got into it yet, Chinchi? No, oh, but I'm reading a quote right now. It says this is a must read for anyone looking to take the game of life to the pro level. The wisdom from Brian in his book is unmatched and it will unequivocally change your life. Sean Casey. Oh, there you go. There you go. Word unequivocally. I have not. Unequ that's a unequivocally, bro. Good no job. doubt about it. Good job. On that word. No doubt. All right. So go out and get that. No, all right, I'm, man. I'll start it today. I really am. Yeah. Uh, go get Arte. Chinch, you're going to start it today, and so are all our listeners. They're going to go get it, too. Nice. And let's get it. Let's get it to uh, number one on the New York Times bestseller list. It's Why right, not? I believe, right now, coming out from the pre sales, it's at number one or two right now. Wow, awesome. So let's I let's push it over the top and go get Arate, guys. Greatness, right? That's what we talk about. It was the highest form of compliment you could give it back in the stoic day, Arate. This guy lives with Arate. He lives greatness. This guy lives with greatness. Moment, best version of yourself, moment by moment by moment. So you let's go great. have some Arate today, bro. You're you're <laughs> living with Arate Chinch yes. today on a Tuesday, November 14th. Go dominate your day, brother. And you, bro. everyone out there, have a great day. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll uh we'll see you guys tomorrow.